Examples. And often when we hear that story, we think, what, like we've just been doing now, we think about how do we make ourselves into people who listen well, okay? But I also want to think not just about us listening and us receiving the word and, and there being fruit growing out of our lives as we receive the word. I want to think a little bit more about the sower. Because I remember hearing this story a long time ago and thinking, that sower is a bit careless, taking the seed and spreading it over all those places. Did you ever hear this parable and think that too? Hang on a minute. Why? Do you, so have, have you planted um, vegetables or flowers with children? How many of you have done that? So I have, having six children, I've done that before. And, and I know you make a um, uh, drill. Do you call it a drill? Would you, yeah, okay. You make a thing in the soil and then you get just the right amount of seeds. Sometimes they're really tiny and you spread them out and they have to be the right distance apart, don't they? Like kind of three or four, two centimetres apart or something like that. You have to read the packet and then you, you cover them over and then you put water. But if you do that with children, what do you end up saying all the time? No, that's too many. <laughs> Those are too close to each other. No, 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 not over there in the thorns. Get them in the drip well. I say that's what happens with children. That actually, truthfully, I'm telling you the story of the wrong people in it. it it's actually Haley saying that to me. <laughs> She's saying, when have I ever done that with children? And that's right. The, the truthful story is, this is Haley and I planting vegetables. Uh, and she's saying to me, no, not like that. They'll be all too clumped together because I'm not a very patient gardener. <laughs> But the thing is, what about this sower spreading this seed over all these places? Uh, you know, don't you think, hang on a minute, we're going to run out of seed, it's a waste. Does the sower not care where the seed goes? Or maybe the sower is very generous. Or maybe the sower has an infinite amount of seed. Maybe he's not just got the seed in this packet. Maybe he's got seed that will go on forever and ever. Who is the sower in the parable? It's an easy answer. Who's the sower in the parable? God. God is the sower. And what's the seed? The seed is the word. Okay? So God speaks his word everywhere, all the time, to everybody. He sends his word out into the earth, and it brings forth fruit. So he's not a careless sower. He's a generous sower. He will try his word out in any kind of soil. It doesn't matter if it looks unpromising. He'll have a go at it. The word is so life-giving that even the poorest looking soil might be able to bring some life, which I think is a comfort to us. Okay, So we might have spent this time for now thinking about, oh, am I the right kind of person who listens properly? Well, the comfort is... Even if you're not a good listener, even if at times you've started to grow up in God, but then there's been thorns that have come in and squashed the life out of you, even if you often find you get distracted, even if you find your heart wanders off when you try to pray, even if you think you show little promise sometimes, God is still coming to you and calling you and planting his word in you. And God is still believing that his word, his seed will bring life out of you. God is still encouraging you. He's still cheering you on. He's not given up on you. So first of all, the seed, the word, brings life, and God is generous with it. I love the reading that Mia's just brought, uh, where the word is no longer the seed, the word is the rain. Did you hear that? And I, I, and I think I actually prefer that idea even more, because the rain really does fall everywhere, doesn't it? The rain doesn't just fall on, the, fall on the soil, it also falls on the pavement and all those other places, because that's what rain does. And um, in that reading there, God says, when, when the rain comes, it causes life to bud and flourish, bringing forth seed and bread from the earth. The word of God does not bring up nothing it always achieves and accomplishes what he wants it to do. God's word to you will bring life out of you. How many of you got grass at home? What's the grass been looking like until a couple of weeks ago? Pretty brown. Doesn't need mowing very much. What does the grass look like now? Yes, like that. It does. And why? 
because it's had rain on it. Actually, it's had this special kind of Devon rain. When we moved down from Aberdeenshire, northeast of Scotland, 10 years ago, it was a whole new thing for us. I remember the children went out in the rain the first time. They're like, it's rain and it's warm rain, because <laughs> they'd never experienced warm rain before. God's word is like the rain that falls on the land and brings forth life. It brings forth light and blessing. It brings forth out of our lives worship and praise and thanksgiving. It brings out of us justice and peace and righteousness and so on. So, so the, the danger with the parable of the sower is that we can end up with it out of balance. We can go away thinking, I need to do more to listen better. I need to do more to receive the word. I need to make fruit come out of me better. As if you could. Can you imagine an apple tree thinking, to make more apples it doesn't happen does it so it's not about us putting in more effort really or it might be but let's not get it out of balance that we do need to do these things we do need to receive the word but the greater point is God's word God's seed brings life out of us even when we don't show very much promise God's word brings praise out of us and makes our lives sing, even if we've often messed it up. God is unlimited. His word is eternal, and he is calling his creation to life. He's calling to, his, to you fruit, bud, blossom. And he's bringing out of us and out of our world healing and righteousness and life. God's word is an infinite resource. There's no scarcity in God. There's always enough in God to make you fruitful. Is that good so far? So the sower is God. The seed and the rain are the word. And all of it will bring growth. And it might surprise you, the growth. One more thing. Who is the word? Jesus is the word. Okay? So when you think about receiving this uh, extravagant, infinite uh, word in your life that will make growth come out of you. It's not about trying to hear some distant message from the sky. It's not trying to decipher some cryptic thing that comes to you. The word is Jesus. It's about being close to him. It's about getting to know him. It's about learning his life. It's about maybe trying praying to him. It's about giving your heart and your life to him. Jesus is the word of God and he's always more than enough to bring good things out of our lives, even when we look like unpromising soil. And God's word will not return to him empty. It will cause life and salvation to spring up from the earth. It will cause life and salvation even to spring up in your life, in your heart. Amen? Okay, are you, are you up for trying something else we've not tried? This involves less chocolate mousse. In fact, less doing stuff. What we're going to do is, that, uh, well, actually several things. We're going we're gonna to pause and you could, um, those sorts of things on the table, the bits of paper you've got lying around near you, you could do any of those things now if you wanted to. You could take a fruit post-it note and you could maybe write on it something that you want to do differently this week as a result of something you've thought or heard this morning. You could just sit and ask that the Holy Spirit would bring rain to you. The Holy Spirit would be rain falling upon you, causing you to grow. Any, any number of those things you could do, and other things too. And also, there'll be on the screen a stop-motion thing of a kidney bean growing. Okay? <laughs> so amongst all those other things, you might want to watch the screen and just watch the miracle of life coming from something that looks dead and think, God, would you do that in me? Would you do that in me? Or maybe you might be thinking about, what are the things I want God to grow in me? Where would I like to see more growth? What area of my life? Does that make sense? So use this as a time of prayer.